In today's journey, we jump on the bandwagon as we decide to make a hard seltzer clone. Aside from this being an extremely easy recipe to follow, it's also extremely easy to modify to your taste. First is the second most important ingredient, the sugar. You will want to use corn sugar and not table sugar, but it may come in your kit labeled as priming sugar. Next, you will need a yeast that will leave some residual sugar, mineral packs to treat the water, title sign findings for clarification, and finally, RO or distilled water. Do not use tap water unless you're okay with it coming out cloudy. And optionally, you can add any flavor additives you want. Originally, this kit from Adventures in Homebrewing could have been a peach. But unfortunately, most kits come designed for five or six gallons in mind, and we don't do that. We do one gallon. So give us a moment while we collect up all the ingredients and get the scales and do some scaling. Although we're gonna skip the part where Phil does math. And we'll come back to when he has 0.6 pounds of corn sugar and 2.5 grams of yeast. For the mineral pack, he just split one of them in half. Our kit came with two, one for each two and a half gallons. But since we're just doing one gallon kits, we're gonna just split that in half and be lazy and screw the fifth. And it won't be like it's the first time we've ever gone off recipe. Isn't that half the fun of home brewing anyways? For the first step, you will wanna take about half of the water, no matter the batch size, and bring it to a boil. Because we are doing a one gallon kit, we're just gonna do 2,000 milliliters. Although if you're doing the five gallon kit, two gallons is more than enough. Unless you're making a hopped version of a hard seltzer, you don't really need to worry about the amount of water as long as it's enough to fully dissolve all of the sugar that's called for in your recipe. The idea is it takes less energy to boil less water and any of the remaining water that needs to be mixed in can be cooled so that when you're done boiling, you won't need to use a wart chiller or a water bath or anything else to bring the temperature down before you pitch the yeast. They'll just come to room temperature when you mix the two waters together. The only thing to be mindful of while making a hard seltzer, other than to sanitize everything, is to be careful not to overboil and caramelize the sugar during this process. Unfortunately, the sugar does need to be boiled, so there's no getting around that. That's why what we're gonna do is bring the water to a boil by itself Remove it from the heat, then fully dissolve the sugar before only boiling again for five Conveniently, we'll be using the time distortion again for your convenience. Now that we've gotten it to a boil, it's time to remove it from the heat source. This is especially important for people using electric heat sources that don't cut off completely when they're turned off. That residual heat could cause caramelization of the sugar before it's completely dissolved. And speaking of adding the sugar, you will not want to add it all at once as it will be harder to get it dissolved in a timely manner. Add about a third of the sugar at a time. You should wait until the water is completely clear again before adding the next dose. And although the goal may be to dissolve the sugar as quickly as possible, the immersion stick Phil is using is a bit overkill. With all of the sugar dissolved, now is the time that we need to add the mineral pack. Whether it be large or small amounts, it is a good idea to not pull them out of the packages before you actually add them, because as you can see, if they pick up moisture from the air, they get harder to... Nice one, Phil. Some of the contents of the bag are hydroscopic, meaning they'll pick up moisture from the air. So don't open up the packages until you're ready to use them, otherwise you'll have a little trouble dissolving them even with the immersion stick. Don't worry about it too much though, but we'll fast forward through this because I'm pretty sure he's just playing at this point. But once you're happy with the amount everything is dissolved into the water, return to the heat, bring back to a boil for at least five minutes. If you're adding other additives that need to be boiled, now is a good time to add them. However, a majority of the additives people would add to a hard seltzer, such as fruit additives or fruit itself, will be added into secondary and not today. And remember, a lot of people are making hard seltzers, so if you're making one yourself, try to find something new and creative to do, and when you do try something out, let us know in the comments below about how it went. And in fact, that's why we like making one gallon recipes more than anything else, it's because it gives us more opportunities to try out new things. The two flavors that we're making in this series is going to be an iced hard seltzer, and a cherry hard seltzer using actual fruit. But other ideas that we have had are to hop the hard seltzers, 
oak them, use flavor additives such as the frozen pina colada mix or the lemonade mixes, and even more exotic items such as nuts. Because of their oil contents, they're hard to use in beer, but because we don't care about head retention as much in a hard seltzer, we don't care that it gets damaged. That's actually one of our favorite things about the hard seltzers is that they're super easy to brew, anyone can do it, although anyone that's doing it should be of drinking age, and you can customize it however you want. It is truly a great introduction to the art of fermentation to someone just getting into the hobby for the first time, but unable to make the full commitment of a beer kit or a wine kit. In fact, other than the sanitizers, the only real specialty equipment that you need to have is the fermentation vessel. An auto siphon would be nice too. There is one downside though, and that is if you're kegging, you're not going to be able to get that full seltzer experience unless you have a soda regulator that can go up to a higher pressure than 30 PSI, 50 being the target. And you can't carbonate this in glass bottles. The CO2 levels are just going to be way too high for them to be able to handle. So instead, use PET bottles, such as reusing soda bottles you have around the house, or you can get them from a store, link in the description. And as we're waiting for our water to finish boiling anyways, this might be a good time to talk about the water itself anyways. We use distilled water because we need to have as little minerals or other gunk in there as possible so that it comes out clearer as a final product. If you use tap water, it might come out cloudy and tasting a bit strong. By using distilled, we start with nothing and then use the mineral pack provided in the kit to get that perfect amount of balance for the body. If you already have an RO water filter in your house, feel free to use that as well. Now as soon as we get to the 5 minute mark on our boil, we remove it from the heat. This is to prevent any further color changing of the liquid. It may have picked up a bit of a tinge to it, that's to be expected because of how much sugar is dissolved in there right now. By the time we finish the process, this should end up crystal clear. We're sorry for the inconvenience right now. Phil's just finishing up his side project on the kitchen set. Unfortunately, there's no cameras in there right now, so you can't see what he's doing. Maybe next time. Although, if you want to see it happen sooner, remember to support us on Patreon. Link in the description below. But the real question will be, does Phil remember that the hot plate is still extremely hot? Guess not. At least he's got his gloves on. This side project of Phil's is actually basically the same kit except for he's using a full pound of corn sugar instead of just the 0.6. This will give us a much higher alcohol content and a bit more body than the original kit would. We want to see if it comes out with the same clarity. But as we're just following the recipe, we're basically done for the day. We just need to transfer these into their fermentation vessels. Make sure that they come down to a below 90 degrees and then just sprinkle the yeast on top. We're done. The kind of sand gets used at a later date. That'll be coming up in part B. First, we have to finish the primary fermentation of these two first. But because we have the fermentation camera set up, we will be able to watch these ferment live. We even get to have the chamber temperature and current time displayed in the lower left corner at all times. This can help give us a visual representation to what happens on the graphs that we'll be able to provide at a later date. And of course, remember that if you're a responsible brewer, now is when you would take a hydrometer reading so you can calculate your alcohol later. But that's it for now. But don't forget to come check out later when we finish part B, which will be the fermentation and transfer, and when we'll cover doing clarification and things like adding fruit. Until then, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you got cooking next.